Uh, Adam Friedman, uh, Vice President at CSD Structural Engineers. So one of the challenges that we see in construction engineering is missing load path. Long span trusses are a perfect example. We've got, again, step back and we think about ourselves as the SER and we've got the permanent structure. We've decided on different members to brace that truss, whether it's plan bracing, whether it's struts, whether it's a diaphragm. We've made that decision that we need that there and in place. In the construction world, those elements aren't in place. A long span truss has to be built on the ground, typically spliced uh, in the field, and you have options. You can ground assemble a whole truss, uh, roll it up or build it vertical and lift it into place with a crank. Or you can build it in segments using shoring columns. In either one of those situations, when we place that truss uh, supported by columns on either end, there is not a single point of infill bracing or struts that are in place unless we have a second crane, more cost, more money, and a second crew that can put in these different elements. So many times we'll look at a long span truss and say, it's 200 feet long. And in its design, it had a brace every 25 feet. What can we do to make the erection more straightforward? So we'll look and say, we've got to at least have struts at the quarter points or at mid span or third points. And then that truss is going to be stable for that condition. We've got a lot less load. We're just looking at self weight, but ultimately that, that truss is now driven by a, a buckling limit state that we've got to consider during construction. On top of that, what are we bracing against? Do we have a system to lean against? Are we using a uh, temporary wire rope? Are we tying into a braced frame in the adjacent you know, section of the building? So that load path is critical and almost always missing during construction. A lot of projects use masonry or concrete shear walls. Great, great load path system. But during steel erection, they may not be there. So again, we get into this tricky situation of we wanna put a steel member up, but we can't brace it until we can hold it in place while someone welds it in place. Those extra steps take time and they take effort. When you have, even when you have an all steel structure and we've got vertical bracing, um, you know, HSS bracing is very common very effective cross-section, but it's field welded more often than not. So again, we get this great load path and when we get this HSS bracing installed, but it's put up with erection points. And now the erector can't wait a day or two while it's welded in place. They've got to keep building. So when a load path isn't there, that's part of the permanent structure, we've got to create a temporary load path. Sometimes it's wire rope bracing. Sometimes it's temporary tension compression pipe shores. Sometimes it's actually fabricated bracing that we can bolt in place immediately while field work is done or while deck diaphragm is installed or while a core wall is, is, is built and put in place. So at some projects, you're gonna have one crane. So you really have to make some decisions about that drives the sequence in the work because you only have one piece of equipment or you can only reach so far. So that's where the coordination and the planning with the erector and the general contractor become critical because what can you do and when? Yeah, so when we think about a project during construction, we've obviously got soft weight loads and we've got dead loads that are, are being continually added to the structure as we go. One of our biggest concerns during construction is wind loads. So one of the challenges we can have is you can think about a long building that has lots of bays of framing. As the wind hits all of this framing, what you can find is that the total base shear for wind loads is actually greater than what the final structure was designed for. So now there's a challenge. Even if we have a permanent lateral force resisting system, we might have forces that are greater than what those were designed for. That's just one challenge. But as we all know, when we walk outside, the weather can vary every day. We've all been through big storms now imagine that big storm happening on your project when it's half built and we're missing load path. How do we overcome those challenges? So when we work with a steel erector, we have to figure out critical milestones. When do we achieve stability? Not just for self weight, but when, when have we met a point that we could see a storm come through overnight when you can't do anything. You can't have someone out there saying, we'll throw cables on this, we'll brace here. You can't work in those conditions. We think about projects along the coast, 
and we have to consider hurricane season. And yes, you might have one week notice that there's a hurricane coming, but now you have all these challenges of, they've got to shut down the site. They've got to get everything put away and they have to leave too. They have to get their families and pack up and go. So you might have a window of 48 or 72 hours to implement a hurricane contingency plan in which you add more bracing. Or in some cases we say, you've got to take things down. You've got to, you've got to undo some of that work so that we ensure we don't have an issue during the hurricane. As an engineer, we're planning for that big storm, that, those big gusts of wind, and we've got to provide a plan in place so that we don't have collapse. You know, if you've got wind or storm conditions, while there's workers there, we've got to think about life safety. You know, safety is number one with everything construction engineering. It's not just about the structure, it's about the tradespeople that are there doing the work.